Israel-Palestine debates have grown fierce on American campuses since Hamas surprise attack on Israel on October 7th. Recent events at IU have convinced some students and faculty that the university is taking unusual measures to silence the pro-Palestinian side. Ethan Sandwise reports. It was hard to pay attention to lectures, just like sitting around with hundreds of other individuals that have no idea of what is going on in the world. And your entire world is crumbling apart. Rashid grew up in Fishers, but his family's from Gaza. He was a senior at IUPUI when the war began. We're expecting these phone calls eventually that our family in an instant could be gone. Last fall, his fears came true. Rashid said Israeli snipers killed two of his cousins along with their father. He says he feels supported by his peers and teachers, but Rashid's disappointed by what he considers a lack of empathy from the university. There's been a rise in uh, obviously anti-Semitism, but also Islamophobia. Like that has been existing to a whole different extent too. And just coming out and being like, these are our students also. And this is a message that you haven't seen across the board. University President Pamela Witten issued a statement five days after a Hamas attack that led to over 1,200 deaths in Israel, sharing heartfelt thoughts to the Jewish community. Many wanted a similar statement for Palestinians, who by that point had lost over 1,500 lives from airstrikes. It's not something that I'm surprised by. Uh, I think right now it's more of a shock to other people who aren't Palestinian. Awad transferred to IU Bloomington last semester. He got involved with the Palestine Solidarity Committee, a student advocacy organization on campus. In November, the group hosted a lecture by Miko Pellet, an Israeli-American anti-war activist. The university canceled the event the day before, saying the committee's faculty advisor, Abul Qadr Sino, made a room reservation error. After the speech went ahead as planned, the university suspended Sino indefinitely from teaching or engaging in student activities. They're using statements that make no sense whatsoever to make those jumps from presumably having done made a mistake filling a form which I have not really uh, to saying that I'm a danger to the community. The university says Sino endangered students by allowing the potentially divisive event to continue and accuses him of repeated threatening behavior. Some critics noted that the investigation into Sino came one day after Indiana Congressman Jim Banks wrote a letter to the IU president threatening to withhold federal funding if the school tolerated, quote, pro-terrorist student activists. It was really confusing because they were just trying to push us around. They were genuinely just trying to get it canceled. That's, that's how I feel. Sino's case has drawn condemnation from free speech groups PEN America and the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. The ACLU also says it's monitoring the situation at IU. A petition to reinstate him has amassed signatures from over 300 of his colleagues. There's no evidence that anyone was ever put in serious danger. A two academic term suspension seems very heavy for something like this. The university gave a similar security justification to shut down an art retrospective at the Eskenazi Museum by Palestinian artist and IU alumna Samia Halaby. It additionally told her that there was concern about her social media posts. Halaby has been outspoken on Palestinian issues. Frankly, the sole mission of a museum is to safely house and show artwork to the public. And so if that's their responsibility and their singular job, I have confidence that they can figure out how to do their job. At a Bloomington faculty council meeting, Provost Rahul Srivastav explained the university's decision. He said that while he can't share all the information available, the school is constantly in touch with state officials and the FBI on a number of security issues. They feel that if they raise the specter of insecurity or lack of safety, then people will go along with them and they can shut free speech on campus and destroy academic freedom on campus. University spokesman Mark Bode declined an interview for this story, but referred WTIU to the university's previous statements. IU maintains that proper procedure was followed for Sinnoh's suspension and that Halaby's exhibit was closed due to security concerns. The statement also reaffirms IU's commitment to free speech. Sinnoh doesn't buy it, though, and he plans to appeal his case. Today it's me. The next time it'd be somebody who speaks about gender uh, rights, women's rights, um, uh, LGBTQ plus rights, uh, uh, any minority rights, or any other topic that may upset politicians. I had professors, I've had my family, I've had friends tell me like, if you walk in a classroom, don't talk about Palestine, don't say you're Palestinian, just stay under the radar, don't talk about anything. And then I realize that's not the kind of man I want to be. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Ethan Sandweiss. 
The war between Israel and Hamas has continued for over 100 days and led to the deaths of over 1,200 Israelis and 24,000 Palestinians. It's according to the Gaza-based health ministry.